I got your wig, I got your wig, ho. Ha ha. You're mad, Miss Wigiana. Miss Wig, Miss Wig, Miss Wigiana. It's like we don't like each other. I don't question the love, but we we stop liking each other. Do you feel like you don't like me? We were like. In Bonnie and Clyde, she was my shadow. We were together. I'd go out. She'd come and stylize the evening, and she'd socialize. And and, yeah. and life got in the way, you yeah. know. And we had the babies, and then we moved. She could say, "Well, you were away," and I could say, "Well, I was working, trying to sustain the lifestyle that Dorit and I lived." Had you were going through a rough patch, but you hadn't yet separated because he was in the meeting. He was in the meeting, and I, it was a it was a few days after that that you guys separated. Okay. So I would suspect that he foresaw that there would either be a separation or that we were heading in that direction. And this allowed me to have financial independence yeah. and, you know, just something of my own. So I guess that son of a gun, you know. Well, he was right. And also where that's a very supportive act is the truth is he knows that if you continue doing the show and you guys are separated, that you're going to have to talk about it and you're not necessarily going to say flattering things about him. You're not trying to attack him, but you're giving your truth. Yeah. So it still is considerate of him to encourage you to do something that is good for you. Yes. And I will say that about PK, you know, he, he's always been supportive like that, you know, and there are a lot of things that I still, you know, love about him and the reasons why I married him and he's got some good qualities you know, just a lot more bad qualities. But I do think also that there was a, a large part of it, if I had to guess, it was more about maybe him not wanting to have the responsibility of having to... Take care of you. Yeah, exactly. You know, this at least, it almost gave him more freedom, you know, more opportunity, more possibilities, financially and other. When you talk to me a certain way no, and you make me feel a no, certain way, not, no, not I that. don't like you. That's not what I asked. There are times I don't like you. I was listening to respond. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that I ever listened to let it sit with me and mm -hmm. contemplate. Okay, not contemplate, but accept. These are his feelings. When did these feelings come up? Like whenever I would take over something. So hmm. if he was going over a contract that I had, and that's his domain, that's the truth. And it reached a point that, you know, because I had known more about um, whatever it was that I was getting into, you know, I wanted to intervene and take over. And for PK, you know, that, made him feel less than. It made him feel like he wasn't the, you know, the best at it. And I wasn't, I didn't have the, the trust or the respect. That's just one example. I just want to understand, PK. I think I made the biggest change that you wanted. You wanted, your biggest ask was to stop drinking. And I did. You were also extremely candid about how PK's drinking played a part in your separation. I give you total props again for setting healthy boundaries for you and your kids. Did you guys ever discuss how you plan to talk about everything? And was it difficult to talk about his struggles with alcohol in front of cameras? So, you know, PK has, had always been a drinker. Um, and I had felt over the years that, you know, the drinking was contributing to a lot of our issues. But it's very difficult. It's very difficult for you to try to get the person who's drinking to see it. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, kudos to him. I had asked him, you know, when, when we were working through some of our issues, I said, listen, you know, you need to be clear and I need you to just stop drinking for a week. And he did, but he felt so good that he decided to look into it because it, I think something clicked and he realized, wait a minute, you know, maybe I do have an issue. And it is a journey that he took on his own and he discovered that he's got, um, you know, didn't have a great relationship with alcohol and that uh, he was an alcoholic and he really wanted to um, take the journey. And uh, he's now almost a year sober, mm -hmm. so which is incredible. Um, but that was something that, you know, because so in the past few years, it wasn't identified. 
you know, and, and even if I were to say, oh, I think he, he drinks too much, or I think it's a problem, you know, that's a very personal thing. And it's something that could also be, well, that's my opinion, but then you're, you're suggesting that, you know, someone has a problem, do they have a problem? This was something that PK came to the realization and, and he was very public about it. Mm -hmm. So it was easier, obviously, um, to talk about it on the show because he was very vocal and, you know, open publicly about it. When you get into a mood or you're angry, you cannot snap out of it, PK. I think we've got deep-rooted resentments that have been built up as a result of what life's thrown at us. I learned at the start of the season that you were recovering from yet another horrific robbery. There were a lot of questions about the details. Lainey from Pennsylvania said, I read Dorit said the 10K in cash was for Christmas bonuses for her staff, but I don't understand why she brought it into the store and left it in a shopping cart. When I was driving home to do the Christmas bonuses, I thought, I don't know if I have enough. Oh, I remember seeing the box cards. I'm going to stop quickly and pick up the box cards. I went to Marshall's, which is a family. Wow, Dorit goes oh, to Marshall's. I love Marshall's oh, and Home Goods. Just kidding. Okay. And when I got to the register, I couldn't find my bag. We had a really difficult year. He was spending a lot of time in London. He had a lot of business there. And it was a year that I needed him the most. He didn't feel protected. Well, I also didn't feel supported right. enough. And I yeah. didn't feel as connected. I've always been the girl that soldiers on. That's who I am. That's who PK knows. Right. I definitely underestimated how big of a setback this last incident had on Was. me. We've been robbed three times, right? The first time he's been caught, he's been sent to jail for 25 years. Done. Second time they haven't done it, the home invaders. But when Dorit had her, I don't even know if you know this, when Dorit had her money stolen at Marshall's when they took the handbag, they caught him as well. And now they, they caught him. And now the probation, yeah, the probation but officer rang me. Well, whoever they caught and said, do you want restitution and all how this? Come, how come no one said anything well, to me? Well, you know what? I don't particularly want to talk about traumatic things. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's Sweetheart, like... Sweetheart, I would love to know yeah, that they, they, caught they did. Him. They caught that that gang. There was three guys. I know two I, of them I, I had I don't priors, know, but all I know is they call But him. they have one? Yeah. They have one? Yeah. So who, who did you speak to, the detective? I spoke to the detective and then I spoke, the probation officer called me, because there's a thing in America called restitution, which basically means you have to pay he's, back. he has to pay it back, but he can't pay it back, so he pays back at £25 PK, a month forever. honey, why am I not involved? He's paying it back in pounds? I think, no, he's not paying back in pounds. <laughs> anyway, it, it, it doesn't... No, sweetheart, Honey, what, I only just... took the call yesterday from the probation officer. I just love that I'm learning about this now. We have to give each other space, of course, but it doesn't mean if you're in a f***ing need or you, then you call me, right? And vice versa, you know, if I'm... We're talking like five times a day. I know, but we're not going to. You said something in the premiere that was like, you know, either we figure this out or we just stay best friends and we're there for our kids. Would you say that which which side are you kind of leaning toward now? How are you guys doing now? Would you say that his, you know, stop his sobriety has helped your relationship? I would definitely say that his sobriety helped our relationship. Mm -hmm. As I said in the reunion when he was four months sober, mm -hmm. it was the best we had been in a very long time. And then after that, a lot of the issues that we had been dealing with in the last few years that we kind of were like this, um, they reared their ugly head. So it clearly was a lot more than just alcohol. Um, I think PK being sober is much more helpful for sure. And I, I, you know, I pray for him and I hope that he, he stays on the journey of sobriety because I think that he's, he is better um, health wise as a, a father, as a man, as a businessman. I just think for, for him, it's, um, you know, it, he'll be better overall. And I think he, he believes that as well. But as far as him and I go, I think that uh, as you'll see this season, you know, as much as I would love for things to be amicable all the time, it just doesn't, didn't happen. There is definitely um, some peaks and some valleys and you see it in the season. And, um, you know, when you're not the one that's making those decisions, it's always a lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there are some struggles, but then you really do see, um, you know, 
a lot of the the journey, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting. So um, as you know, my son was not well and he was in the hospital for a while. And, you know, PK and I both, we, we love our children more than anything. And, you know, we came together and everything at that point really doesn't matter. To be honest, nothing matters, but the health and well-being of your kids. And, um, you know, it definitely brought us into a family environment and putting the kids first. I think where we go from here, it remains to be seen. I think that, um, you know, there is work to be done, even in all aspects, mm -hmm. just to be able to have a friendship that is very strong and not have, you know, the continued ups and downs. What is the current status with you and PK? Um, things are good. We are friendly and we're communicating and things are status quo. No, you are not divorced. No, we're not. You are separated. Yes. And divorce is not in process. No. Do you think there's a chance you guys end up back together? You know, I can't say that there isn't a chance because we're not getting a divorce right now, but I don't know. I really don't know. I think there's always a chance for anything. Are you dating other people? No, no. Do I believe that no? Oh, well, it's definitely it's a, a no. no. Okay. It's a topic where it's very weird because I try to almost think, am I supposed to be dating people? Is that allowed? Well, of course it's allowed. We're separated. Yeah. Is PK dating someone? Oh my God, is he? So <laughs> it's one of those, it, I think it's still so fresh, even though it's been now, I don't even know how many months, but it just, I'm not in the headspace where I think I'm ready or open. That said, probably if I found out he was dating, I might be more inclined to. I don't know. I think there's probably a, a one more step until I get to that place where I feel comfortable enough to, to go out into the dating world. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids What? 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 <laughs> you're so upset But that's like okay because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax Because I said what I said